So let's take you briefly through some of the key pointers as reasons behind why the president has asked for his head. On your screen now, um, uh, we can read along. He says that um, he told investors, that is Tiger IPI agents, that Dr. Baumian needs about $200,000 as appearance fee and some positions for his siblings. Also, he demanded 20% cut from the investors to help them in, uh, invest some 500,000 US dollars in Ghana. He also suggested to the investors to invest in bonds instead of any other um, uh, any other facilities that they may want to invest in. And then also he assured the investors he can't introduce them to the president using his good relations. So um, those are some of the key pointers leading to Charles Edubwahane's sucking. And um, th that's the big story that uh, broke earlier today from the office of the president. And we are keeping very keen eyes on it. And uh, if you go to our website, 3news.com, you'd also be able to follow this particular conversation where we've brought different angles of how all of this has played out. As a matter of fact, the video in which he's been captured saying all of this will be premiered later today at around 4 p.m. when um, Tiger IPI, led by Anas Arume Awanas, uh, let the world get to see what his latest documentary is about. He has to, he has to do with Galamse. He calls it the Galamse economy. And it is within that video or that um, uh, investigative piece that this young man, uh, Charles Edibois, he has been fingered of um, influence or peddling, the, using the name of the vice president. We are trying to speak to a uh, legal practitioner, a private legal practitioner, Martin Pebu, who himself had been asking for some major shake-up or decision to be taken by the president regarding his finance minister and some of the key allies who work with him. He's joined us via phone for a quick chat on this. Mr. Pebu, a very good afternoon to you and thank you for joining us on TV3. Hello. Good afternoon. Right. Uh, to start with, what are your initial thoughts on the decision by President Akufuado to sack um, uh, Charles Edubuahin, uh, Deputy Finance Minister, at the, uh, uh, who is in charge of uh, finance at the Ministry? Of, he's a Minister of State at the Finance Ministry, I should say. Well, uh, what we say is that you see where the intransigence of the president is lead, leading him to. This is something he should have done a long time ago. Now he's seen how uh, Providence has provided a reason. So it will go down in history as uh, a situation in which the president was unwilling to sack him, but Providence provided a reason. So if there's no credit to the president. He was just fought. It's actually a shame on him. Yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, there, there are. Those who are saying that the placement of the issues are different. First of all, for instance, you led a demonstration asking for the president to sack the finance minister and he himself should resign. And it's on the back of the current economic challenges. Charles Edubwahin was among those that the NPP NPs wanted out as well. So do you think there's a linkage between that call for him to be sacked as against this one, which has to do with he using the vice president's name for something untoward? Yes, yeah, so that's why I'm saying that these were the very reasons, the conflict of interest and other bad governance practices going on. That's why we're asking that they all be sacked. And the president said no. And I'm saying that so Providence has given a reason for them to be sacked. So the president refused to do so. Uh -huh. So there's no credit to the president. It's actually a shame on him that mm -hmm. when people called upon him to do the needful, he refused. And now God has provided a reason. Right. That the statement that uh, announced his sacking also said that he's now been referred, or the, the case has been referred to the Office of the Special Prosecutor. What are your expectations from the Office of the Special Prosecutor on this particular matter? Yes, I pray that the uh, Special Prosecutor, Mr. Kishi Ejabin, uh, will do a diligent job. He will go into the matter thoroughly and come out with findings that will uh, stay the course of time. Yes. So I uh, have no doubt that Mr. Kishi Jabin is up to the job. All we have to pray for and be vigilant is that the political actors don't go behind the scenes and try to influence him. Because that one, that's also a big challenge. While we are at home hoping that he does the right thing, you'll find all manner of emissaries going to him and trying to influence the process. So that is something we should be watching against. You remember the case of the businessman who went to parliament to uh, bribe the MPs 
Uh -huh. So that's how the system works. You always find people trying to uh, influence the system in order to prevent the system from doing its work well. And, and in your estimation, this is my final question, uh, Mr. Kwebu. In your estimation, what do you think is accounting for people around the office of the president, or in this case, the vice president, that makes them think that they can use their connection with these high-profile uh, individuals to have their way around. We remember, well, we still through our nurse, we recall what happened to uh, the former GFA boss, and now this time around, someone right within the quarters of the government. What kind of yes. impression does that give you? So it's the impunity. That's what we call impunity. Impunity. So those who've done it in the past didn't get punished. So there's incentive for others to try. So because the system is usually not strong, prosecution of those persons usually doesn't happen. That is why others are able to do it. So now, you know, Mr. Nyanti T is the, uh, the same, what do you call it? Uh, standing prosecution right and this one too is going so hopefully with time uh it should stop maybe uh martin what you guys should do is that maybe you should do a documentary on some of the past government officials who were convicted like you go into the tape you see maybe from coming comments time right all the people right up to now all the ministers who have gone to jail let's do a special documentary because i know it's been long and there are a lot of gen z uh, uh, citizens amongst us and all that. So they are young, they don't know what's happening in the past. Maybe you should do a documentary on that so that you show all these faces, the crimes and the conviction, where they serve their jail sentences and the rest. It will send a message to uh, other would-be actors that, hey, the law can bite. 